So I've been working on a tool torque tester uh, with Binary Dinosaur, a high school kid friend of mine. Um, got the idea from watching AVE's videos. Um, he had a was going to make one of these a while ago. Um, they had brake discs and other stuff in a GitHub project, and he asked if people wanted to help. And at the time, I said, yeah, I might have time, and that was like two years ago, and I finally getting around to, to monkeying with this. Um, he sort of shelved the project, um, but I had an idea, I had a breakthrough. Um, one of those things, he percolates and you come up with a good idea, or I think it's a good idea. So, the idea is, I have this encoder here. Um, it outputs um, pulses each time this as the shaft turns. Now this encoder outputs 256 pulses per revolution. So by figuring out the time in between each pulse you can figure out how fast the shaft is spinning. And if you can figure out how fast the shaft is spinning uh, you can figure out the torque because if you put a known load on a drill you can figure out um, you know how fast it can accelerate that load. So the plan is to have a flywheel, actually a car tire wheel, that the drill will spin up to speed and you'll measure how fast the drill can accelerate that that um, flywheel up to speed. So one problem we got stuck on was how do you do the data analysis. I mean in Arduino writing all the program to do all the data processing to figure out torque and RPM and you got a big table because you want to do a lot of samples. Um, so uh, I had the idea of just having the Arduino do data collection, just data collection and everything else be done on the computer uh, with a spreadsheet. So this will log, uh, actually using an Arduino Mega, because it has more RAM than Arduino Uno. So this has 8K of RAM and about 2K, I'm sorry, two bytes of memory for each entry. So it comes out to be you can do, and then there's some overhead, but you can do about 3,800 data points uh, before you run out of memory. So after it outputs all the times between each pulse, I can then copy them into a spreadsheet and do the math required to convert them into RPM and convert them into then once I figure out the moment of inertia for the tire, you can figure out how much torque it takes to spin that up to speed and and all sorts of other stuff. So, um, but I'm not going to have, write a program to do all that with the Arduino. I'm sure it's possible, um, but ain't nobody got time for that. So, um, let me give you a quick demo of how this works. So, I'm going to reset this. And then now I'm just going to spin this encoder. Now that I've spun it, yeah. so it output a list of numbers there. I, don't know, I know everything's small, but there's all you really need to know is there's a the giant list of numbers there uh, on the left here. That's a giant list of numbers. And then if I copy those, select all, I'm going to copy them. And now I can paste them into a spreadsheet. Paste, paste. Now, these are the pulses I got when I spun this encoder. So I did pulse after pulse after pulse. And you can see it was peaking at about 2500 RPM. That's 2500. Um, so it does pulses. Um, because I was spinning it by hand. So let's take a look at what it looks like when we use a drill. Paste. 
and now we ramp up to speed and then we isolate at a little over 1600 RPM. I'm excited to get the rest of it working. Um, should be interesting to see. I'll get to test out to see if um, the big batteries are better than the small batteries as far as torque goes. Um, I get to test out new Ryobi drills versus old Ryobi drills. Uh, my dad has a Bosch drill I can test. I have quarter drills. Um, I can probably borrow a Makita drill or two from friends of mine. Um, yeah, or if somebody wants to send a drill for me to try out, I'd be happy to try it out. Um, I mostly have Ryobi stuff, like I've mentioned before, so that's why I'll be doing Ryobi. So, we are going to try out the tool torque tester for the first time. We're going to get it calibrated. Um, we've run it once, but um, the encoder was wobbling too much, so now we've got this... I mean, look at that. That's professional right there. we got the encoder hot glued on and the fabric holding it on, so that should... Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of professionalism you'd expect. Um, oh yeah, that the hot glue got the electrical tape hot, so it unstuck the the electrical tape. So plan B, but we're ready to go. I've got a rope wrapped around. Um, I'm gonna lift up 20 pounds of weight, and we're gonna drop it and see how fast that accelerates the wheel, and then we'll we'll log that onto the computer and then we'll see how fast the, the drill will do it. There we go, let's see. So reset. And... There we go. Decker. Um, this was actually my great great grandfather's drill. It um, patented in November 1917 and I believe it was produced between April 1921 and April 1924. So it's sneaking up on a hundred years old. Um, another interesting thing, the trigger switch toggles. So that's off, the arrow's pointing off. Pull it again, it toggles to on. Toggles, 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 clicks around. So if you leave it here and plug it in, it'll it'll go take off on you. Um, but this drill, we have an advertisement. It was one of the first drills that actually had a trigger switch. It was an, um, and it said pistol grip and trigger switch was their claim to fame for this thing. So sold for service call, whatever company, it sold it Black & Decker company. Um, so we're going to try this one. It's got a big long pipe on it to hang on to, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but the, the click on off makes me a little nervous. Um. It's hard to describe, but it has an old electronic smell. It smells like the... Um, Ever used the uh, slot cars from 19 from the old? Oh like, yeah, it has that <laughs> same smell. Right, so I have this other Black and Decker drill, it's supposed to run at 375 RPM, also a half inch chuck. Um, this one didn't have a nice handle on it, I was worried about the torque, so I have a piece of pipe, this is just pipe thread on the top to add for an axing handle, so this is a way overkill, obviously I never use a drill like this, but um, but I want something to hang on to, so let's reset. So here's my spreadsheet I have for the tool torque tester, tool dynometer. Um, so one quick note before you 
somebody tries opening this um, in LibreOffice. Um, I'm using LibreOffice on Linux, and Linux just chokes on the spreadsheet. If you have, um, if you go to View, the Tools, Options, View, if you have anti-aliasing turned on, this spreadsheet just, it just locks up the computer, um, something awful. So uh, uncheck that and it works perfectly fine. So spreadsheets, yay! <laughs> I love spreadsheets. Um, you can do so much with these things. So let's take a look at the data we collected. So I have the 10 pound weight, um, 20 pound weight, the Ryobi drill, the Ryobi with a small battery, the Milwaukee, the 1920s Black & Decker, newer Black & Decker, and all combined. So let's take first look at my my calibration. So what I have is the recorded um, microseconds uh, between each pulse. You can convert that or add up the elapsed time and then also um, calculate the RPM based on um, 256 pulses per revolution and the fact that these are microseconds and anyways convert that into um, RPM and then you can convert the RPM into feet per second of the outside of the wheel because we want to know that for figuring out the acceleration of the, f the weight we're dropping so and then you can calculate using the feet per second and the elapsed time in seconds you can figure out um, what its acceleration is. Um, graph them on a line, uh, get the best fit trend line, and you figure out that the average acceleration was 12 feet per second per second. Now if we switch to the 20 pound weight, you can see that the average acceleration here was 18 feet per second per second. Um, and we got a wonderful trend line, same as before, R squared value of 0.999. Um, can't ask for better stats than that. Um, so the astute observers will notice that 12, that 18 feet per second is less than twice of 12, 12 doubled should be 24. So how come the 20 pound weight doesn't accelerate the wheel twice as fast as the 10 pound weight? Well, here's the thing. The falling weight also has to accelerate itself. So figure out that the mass of the falling weights, the, the 10 pound weights, the two of them together, um, the mass of those is 0.62 slugs. And you figure out I know it's imperial, but we want to do foot pounds eventually. So, anyways, um, so we're accelerating that at 18 feet per second. So it will take 11 pounds of force to accelerate that many, that much mass at 18 feet per second. So you know that there's a total. Um, the total is 20 pounds of force and it's 11 of that's going into accelerating the falling mass and the remaining eight is going into accelerating the flywheel. And if we look back here at the 10 pound, we've got, um, uh, takes 3.89, 3.9 pounds to accelerate the mass at 12 feet per second per second. And that means that we've got it, the leftover force for accelerating the flywheel is around six pounds because we had 10 total. 0.48 slugs. I'm not sure if that's really the right moment of inertia measurement for the flywheel, um, whether or not slugs, but it seems like it, that it should be. Um, and this one's 0.47. So once again, pretty darn close. So I'm happy with those two, two measurements and those calculations. Um, so let's take a look at the individuals. Um, the Ryobi drill um, calculated that or accelerated the flywheel at 35 feet per second per second for average torque or average force of 16.93. 
This right will be with a small battery accelerated at 20, um, 3 feet per second per second for 11 pounds of force. The Milwaukee uh, did 36 for, for 17 pounds of force. The 1920s Black and Decker, 33 and 15, and so on. So these numbers came from using the line estimate function. So I'm estimating a line um, for the first, just the first section of data points from the first hundred or so, um, because you can see it's not linear. There's a curve to it. Um, so I'm just checking this this first section. Um, you could check any one of the sections, um, but I decided to just stick with the the first section. Um, if anybody's curious about what it is between, you know, say 200 RPM and 250, you can figure out the average torque in that range. Um, if somebody really wants to know a specific RPM range, um, I can figure that out. Or you can download the spreadsheet and do it yourself. Um, so let's take a look at them graph together because this is kind of interesting. Uh, you can see that the, well, first of all, the Ryobi small battery just is way behind right at the beginning. Um, and then it kind of picks up okay, but compared to the, the Ryobi with the big, you know, large capacity battery. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It's really far behind. Um, but after about 200 RPM, the Ryobi drill really takes off and holds its own. The um, the Milwaukee drill starts off gangbusters, but then sort of plateaus a little bit up at the higher RPM. Um, I think that's because it maxes out at about... Um, 300 rpm with the right angle drive so no sorry 350 so it doesn't get to a higher high as high of a speed as the other drills do so that affects the results um yeah so the newer black and decker comes out on the bottom um anyways at the, so that is for the full rpm range um and this is actually not charted this is a bit odd uh, because this is not based on time it's based on how far the flywheel has rotated which makes it a little bit weird but it's the same general idea um, so these are from 0 to 200 rpm how much torque it has so you can see the Milwaukee's way ahead uh, not way ahead but right up there um, this would probably actually have more torque I can see there's kind of a little jitter there the whole flywheel setup sort of lurches off the table when you use the higher torque drill so really I need to get that bolted down to something immovable um, and I am also holding the drills by hand so I'm sure that's making this a little bit squishier at the beginning um, but yeah probably the most interesting results for me are the um, the difference between the low capacity battery the small battery and big battery for the Ryobi drill because um, it makes such a huge difference um, between those two you know I, I knew that the I suspected that the big batteries would have more torque because the batteries the, the cells in there are in parallel rather than in series so you'd expect that they would probably be able to put out more current um, but I wasn't expecting this much difference um, both batteries were fully charged, um, so I might try other other brands. And also, I do want to get a Milwaukee drill in and try that versus the Ry Ryobi and try out my dad's Bosch. Although the Bosch, I think, only um, is not a lithium ion. So, but that'll be be interesting too, just to compare the cordless drills, um, because really, um, while these drills are interesting, they're not exactly uh, comparable, I mean, yeah. If you're in the market for a quarter drill, you're probably not going to be worried, you know, if you're getting an ancient Black & Decker drill um, versus a Milwaukee, you know, you're not going to be shop, you know, torque shopping compared to you. You're going to buy whatever is convenient if you're going to buy, be buying used old stuff. Um, but, yeah, so that's the, 
the data. All this spreadsheet, like I said before, I think I said before, is up on GitHub. Um, if anybody's really interested in playing with this, um, all the data is there. You can plug in your own stuff. If somebody has a specific type of drill that they want to see, um, I can try to get my hands on one. I said uh, a lot of my friends have um, Milwaukee, uh, sorry, Makita, so I should be able to get a hold of a <coughs> Makita cordless drill um, to also test alongside the Ryobi. Um, and I can also test the other Ryobi battery packs that I have. I hope you liked this video. If you did, I'd hope you'd consider subscribing. I've got a virtually endless supply of projects I could make videos about. If there's something I can do better, or if there's a type of video you'd like to see more of, leave a comment down below.